Well then guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the Golf Mate YouTube channel and welcome back to another episode in our Shot Scope series. Now today you join me at the wonderful Manning's Golf and Wine Estate and today I'm actually going to put the Shot Scope V3 GPS watch through its paces and see the actual data that I can get for it in a round of golf. If you haven't seen our last two videos of the Shot Scope unboxing and the Shot Scope range, be sure to check them out as there's a lot of information there about the actual Shot Scope brand itself. But today I'm just going to go through the paces of the actual watch itself. I've put the tracking tags on all my clubs and I'm going to see what data I can get and just see how difficult the watch is to use and how easy it is to just navigate myself around the golf course. I've already put the tracking tags on. It was actually quite easy to do. I wasn't really sure how to do it to begin with, but there's a lot of information on the website. But from that, I wasn't really sure how it's going to work. But if you look at the watch, it actually shows what club you're using by the tracking tags there. So let's play around the golf. Let's see how I get on and hopefully I can do a good score and have some pretty decent data to get up with it. Let's see. So first hole didn't go very well. I made a bogey, but it was pretty all over the place. But the one thing that I am quite surprised about so far is that the watch does literally, as soon as you get the club out of your bag and swing it, the tracking tags instantly recognize it and then it goes straight to your watch. So it's quite a clever setup that I wasn't actually sure how it would work at first, but bogey at the first, quite an easy hole. Let's see if I can make a few pars and a few birdies. Understandably, I'm a bit rusty, let's see. So 12 holes in, 12 holes in, and my game is all over the place. I'm sure you've seen it. It's like I'm going from bogey to birdie to par. It's, it's, it's all over the place. There's no consistency. I'm, I'm not surprised because I'm testing out a few things as well as the shot scope, and I'm just trying to see if I can get my game back. But the shot scope so far, I'm really interested to see what the end result is after this round. You can see that the putting actual feature of this. I didn't actually rise to begin with, so I missed out a few holes. You, when you go through the actual pin seeker at the end, you put in how many putts you actually have. There's one, two, or three, and you can even do more if you've had a bad day. But that's so simple to do, and it's so easy as well. So I'm really interested to see what my strokes gained is on the, on the end of this round. I have absolutely no idea, because I think everything's gonna be quite consistently just bad. <laughs> because it's like, one thing does well on one hole, and then one thing does really bad on the next hole. So. 12 holes left, I am, I think I'm six over, and it's, it's not bad, it's not It's not good, but I, I hopefully I wanna kind of par out, I know I'm not going to, but I'll take nine over as a 18 hole score here because my game's not there, the, the putting's not there, but the ball striking is, is okay. So let's, let's see if I can get some decent scores and get a few birdies. Last hole. Some stuff's happened. My score's are in pieces, but I'll let you guys know that at the end of the round when we look at the data and I'll see what I have to improve. I, I have a feeling I know. That was, a, uh, that was a tough round, that was a tough back nine. Um, but the watch was easy to use, it, finishing round, simple. It says how long you've been as well, I was three hours and a, three and a half hours I think, so not too bad, but let's drive home, let's upload my round to my phone and have a look at the data. Stay tuned, this will be interesting. 
Right guys, as you can see, I am now home and we're going to talk about the data that you can get from the Shotscope V3 GPS watch. I'll put the phone just here for you now so you can see what I'm seeing. And what I've already done is I've uploaded my round to my phone. It's so simple, you just have to press an upload round button and make sure your watch is still linked via Bluetooth to your phone itself. You then have to confirm what you actually have scored. And after that, you can see what it's actually recorded. And for me, I've already taken a quick look and I have edited it. So I've already got my putts in for the first three holes because I did miss it. And let's just take a deep dive and just click onto this round here. So you can see that it's got all the scores. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory. You can see I've got made a few, one birdie and I made a pretty, a pretty awful round on the back nine there with a few doubles as well. But so far looking at it here, you can see there are some pretty basic statistics. So you've got the fairways and regulation, greens and regulation, putts, and that's something that you could kind of always, you could remember and almost put into other applications, other third party applications. But I didn't actually have to do anything here. I didn't have to input anything. It did this for me already. So it's already making it such an easy process to record this data. You can see there that it's got my out and it's in for a total of 84. You do confirm that when you upload your round. So if it has got any abnormalities or mistakes, it will show you and you can change that and it only takes a few minutes. Now, because this is my first round of golf on the Shotscope V3 GPS watch, I can't compare it to my seasonal statistics, but that is a video that's coming very soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. But you can see if I go to round statistics, you can see round versus season. So once you actually get a lot more rounds under your belt, you can see how you perform on an average in comparison to other rounds you've done. So which means that you can kind of see if you've actually played well or badly. The thing that's amazed me the most about this is if you click on the holes feature, so you can see there on the top, there's an overview and there's holes. If we go onto the holes feature, it literally tells you where you've gone on each hole. Now, again, on the upload round feature, you can edit this to make sure it is 100% correct. And maybe you're watching this right now thinking, oh, but it's gonna be all over the place. This is spot on for me so far. You can see that I've got my duck hook shot with my hybrid on the first hole and then a little pitch out to get up and down. It's got my second hole where I made a birdie. It really is extremely accurate for something that you don't have to input anything into, which is for me something that I've never actually seen before. So that shows how they can get all this data because for the GPS, it literally just goes through and when you actually have those tracking tags on it, when you do change and it notices, oh, okay, this guy's hitting a different shot with his different club, it then says, okay, now he's hitting the second shot, he's hitting the third shot. The putting is down for you to do on the watch itself, but that honestly only takes a few seconds. Going away from this, let's now go on to a different feature on this watch application. Because you can see I'm on rounds and that's pretty straightforward already. But if I want to have a look at how my actual scoring and performance is doing, pretty obviously, I'm gonna click on the performance feature. And you can see here, I've got clubs, tee shot, approaches, short game, putting, and strokes gained. Now, I'm not gonna click on clubs because for my round, I only use about a half set, so it's not gonna to be too applicable. But what I'm gonna do first is the strokes gained feature, because this is a new feature and it shows you how your round went or how your season is going in comparison to a pro. I haven't clicked on this yet, and I'm really interested to see how my round of golf went in comparison to a professional golfer and what my strokes gained will be. I'm not sure, Let, let's, let's have a look. <laughs> wow, okay, um, Jesus, that is something that I didn't really expect. So my, as you guys can see, my strokes gained off the tee isn't too bad, isn't too bad. And I'm not too surprised with that. I think mine was pretty decent apart from a few hiccups. But my strokes gain approach and my strokes gain putting is absolutely awful. Now I thought my short game would actually be a lot worse, but I guess I was giving myself decent chances all around six to eight foot, but I did miss quite a lot actually. So my strokes gain putting is minus 11.71. Now anyone who's watching this video who's played around a golf with me before, I don't think they'll be too surprised with that, but it shows that already from that my strokes gain of minus 20.73 means that I really do need to improve my putting. I'm not too surprised, but it's such a cool feature to see. And then you can also make your performance through the season and see what it is. That's only one round. If I go even deeper and go into a season after six or seven months, it's gonna have a lot more complex statistics to give. Going past this, let's go back now and let's have a look at my actual putting itself. You can see that my make percentage, three putt percentage, just isn't really very strong. And it really is showing the PGA Tour players how strong their putting actually is. That's some pretty decent stats that I can have there. But then quickly, let's gloss over the short game as well. See average proximity to hole, unbelievable feature that I can have there. You can literally see how far you're, you're knocking it close. And you can see I wasn't doing very, very well there. 56% inside six foot, not too bad. And 22% up and down. 
not not great, not great at all. But then onto my tee shots, you can see here that my fairway success, oh god, so my fairway success there at 33% with my left miss and right miss both being also 33% means that, as I said on the course, that my, uh, my driving was not consistent, it was all over the place, I wasn't hitting it with a consistent miss and that just shows how rusty I am with golf returning from lockdown. What do I need to work on from all of this? Well, not distance, because you can see that my average at 287 yards, my my longest at 330 yards is pretty decent, but it seems that I need to work on my putting, my approach play, and maybe try and get a consistent swing when I'm out on the course, because I'm going left, right, all over the place. But that's just what I've got from one round of golf. It's so simple, and I really didn't have to do much, but I can already know, rather than walking away from that round, because I said to you on the 18th hole, I don't really know what was wrong with my game. I thought all of it was wrong with my game, but it was actually the putting and my approach play that was the most consistently awful. So from that, I can really just go and practice the things that I know I need to practice and improve my game from it, which makes me understand why shot scope is so successful when lowering people's handicaps, because you know what exactly you need to work on. But that's not all, because although I've done one round with a shot scope V3 GPS watch, I'm gonna do a lot more. I'm gonna do a long-term test and see how much data I can get and how much it can actually improve my game. Because you can see there, I've got a lot to work on. So stay tuned in the next month, because you'll see another video where I'm getting some long-term data and seeing if it can actually improve my game. So stay tuned for that. I hope you guys have enjoyed this review of the ShotScope V3 GPS watch. There's a lot more coming very, very soon. So if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. And if you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like too, and leave a comment what you think of the ShotScope V3 GPS watch. If you've got your hands on one already, how has it affected your game? Has it lowered it? Have you really been able to like measure your actual statistics? Let me know. I'll see you guys at the next video.